Hey guys, it's Gordon. I'm in the shop, but I am following your conversation. Um, since I'm here, I'll go ahead and just do this real quick so you can see what's behind the uh, logic or why I do what I do. So I am now, it, we'll, I'll just use this as an example. This is a brake with glue in it. It's got a polyurethane glue. It's kind of sloppy. It's at an angle. It's not, um, not bad, but I can go ahead and for this demo, just cut it out the way I do it. So first of all, on the sleds, I'm using MDF now because there's no grain. It's super easy to cut. Um, you know, it cuts like, like cardboard. So um, I think it's a little bit safer. And as you can see, the glue pops off a little bit easier. It stays on really good, so I'm secure and I'm safe. But uh, my hot melt at times, if I got a little excessive, it was hard to separate it from solid wood. So I've been using MDF. It's half inch, which just gives me a little bit more height. So all that said, First thing I did is line, you gotta clock your, the brake, because as you can see how I'm set up on this board, the brakes don't always run perfectly parallel with the base. So don't just flush the thing up and then cut through it, because if you do it this way, you'll end up taking a lot more material out because you gotta eat up all of that brake. So I pay a little bit of attention to where it is, clock it, as you can see, I'm a couple degrees off, which is what I wanted. And then the second thing I do is, this one's a fracture, um, at an angle, which is cool because it's easier to hide. And what I'll do then is I just use an angle finder and put that on there and kind of sight it to say, all right, I'm at 18 degrees, so I can tip the blade in my table saw at 18 degrees. Now, when we run this through the table saw, I'm gonna cut just enough to get through the tote and you know make a couple passes and go just as wide as I need to. This is secure and this is secure. Don't rip it all the way in half because then we lose our, our height. The height is important to me because of the lateral adjusters there. I think if you start taking a couple millimeters out at a time, you get misalignment with the bore, you get misalignment with the geometry, you have to then feather and sand out, and it starts to look a little wonky. I can always tell when something's been chopped and, and cut down a little bit because the shape just isn't the, what it should be. Um, enough said. So, rip this on the table saw, leave it alone, I'm gonna do that and come right back. If you don't have calipers to measure, here's a quick trick. You can just put a piece of paper on here and with your marking knife, you can make the two cuts. Gives you an idea what we need. That's what I'm looking for in terms of thickness. So now I have a gauge and it'll be as close. Okay, so on this fixture, why I believe this is the safest way to do this is that one, I've made my sled long enough that my hands are way back here. I'm not up in the blade anywhere. It's secured with hot melt, so it's not going anywhere. When I put it on the saw and I feed it into the saw, my blade is tipped to 18 degrees. This is unplugged, there's no guards for this conversation. The blade's coming this way, so it's naturally pushing against me and it is pushing down a little bit. And all I'm doing is going far enough, um, when my blade comes all the way up, far enough to get through the tote itself, and then I back back out. I'm keeping a firm hold on my sled at all times. All I'm doing is removing enough material, and then I back back out. Shut the saw off, everything's safe, and um, the sled's there. No kickback, no fingers. I saw another suggestion out there um, with a circular saw and I just don't know how you're gonna hold that and and um, and get an accurate cut that's parallel and flat. Everything I'm doing here is with precise control which only pays dividends in the end when it comes to gluing a little wedge in there. Okay, now I'm all prepped and ready, I cut out. I went ahead and cut away some of the excess material but for this repair, it's tight enough and this is mahogany um, that I wouldn't tin it. So I'm gonna use my mahogany slice that we did and I'm gonna push that in, and you can see there's, there's enough room for adhesive, there's a little wiggle, but um, it's also not flopping around in there. So it'll stay by itself, and that's really what I'm looking for. And I want a little bit of oversize because we're gonna remove that material, 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this, but not just don't just squeeze the MDF, I'm gonna put the clamp on the tote itself, but I'm gonna leave it on this sled so that it has some backer and it stays. But there's a little bit of flex, and then I usually take a bandsaw cut too to give myself some spring if I need it. But in this case, you can see I can pull that out of there, but once we put the adhesive in, it fills in on the pores, and we haven't sanded anything. These are all table saw cuts. Everything's open and clean. No need to acetone, no need to wipe it. Um, I'm just gonna clamp this after I glue it, and it's good to go. And then one last comment. Um, I hesitate to say anything, but I, I just wanna say, um, because we're all sharing ideas, and at times we're gonna differ, somebody said something about putting the darker material in as a slice, and I do the exact opposite. And the reason is, if I put a dark material in here, then I have now a dark stripe and I need to feather it out and color into the tote. And how do you stop that or where do you fade it away? I'm the opposite in the fact that if I use light wood, right, as light as I can get in the same species, then I have two margins. I have this color and this color, which are the same. And now I can use a model brush and I go very, very tiny with a water diluted dye. Uh, I'm using trans tint and you can tint the material without putting stain all over it. And the beauty of the water-based tint is that you can go light, we can dilute it, put it on, let it dry, take a look. And if you're not as dark as you want to be, then you just darken it up. You just keep getting darker. And the objective, of course, is to match the colors on both sides. Just fill in the gap, really, is all you're doing. And by doing that, let the natural uh, colors of the toad already exist be there, all we're trying to do is match that one little stripe and make it go away. That's just my opinion. Um, again, you guys, uh, lots of great ideas out there. Here's um, just a little more detail on a Saturday night. Hope you can find it useful. Check in on my, um, on my channel. Somebody already mentioned it. I'll post that out there as well. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.